Hello, sweetheart. Your nose is cold. I just come in. Why? Where have you been? Surely you haven't been out in this weather. I went down to the village to get some things I'd forgotten. Have you gotten the chicken netting? It wasn't the right kind. I went on to another dump, but that wasn't any good either. Practically a whole day wasted. My god, I'm half frozen. The snow came down thick. The car skidded like anything. What do you bet we're not snowed up tomorrow? Oh, I do hope not. If only the pipes don't freeze. We'll have to keep an eye on central heating. Not too good. I wish I'd send the folk along. We haven't got any too much. I do so hope everything goes well at first. First impressions are so important. Is everything ready? No one's arrived yet, I suppose. No, thank goodness. This ball is hooked early. Afraid of the weather, I suppose. What a nuisance those daily women are. It leaves everything on your shoulders. And yours. This is a partnership. So long as you don't ask me to cook. No, no, that's my department. And anyway, we've got lots of tins stocked up, just in case we get all snowed up. Oh, Charles, do you think it's going to be all right? Got cold feet, have you? Are you sorry we didn't sell the place when your aunt left it to you instead of having this mad idea of running it as a guest home? No, no, I'm not. I love it. And talking of a guest house, just look at that! Pretty good. What? You left out the X. Monkwell instead of Monkswell? Good lord, so I did. However did I come to do that. But it doesn't really matter, does it? Monkwell is just a good a name. You're in disgrace. Go and stuck up the central heating. Across the icy yard? Ah, oh, shall I bank that up for the night now? You don't do that until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. How appalling. Hurry up and get it done. Someone may arrive at any minute now. You've got all the rooms worked out, don't you? Yes. This is Royal Front Corpus Room, Major Metcalf, Blue Room, Miss Casewell, East Room, and Mr. Wren, Oak Room. I wonder what all these people will be like. All we have to charge right in advance? Oh no, I don't think so. We're rather much at this game. Yes, but if they refuse to pay the rent, we just hold on to their luggage. It's quite simple. I still feel like we should have took a correspondence course in hotel keeping. We're sure to get added some way. What happens if their luggage is just bricks wrapped up in the newspaper? Where shall we be then? They all wrote some very good addresses. That's what servants with forged references do. Some of these people may be criminals hiding from the police. I don't care what they are, so long as they pay us seven guineas every week. You're such a wonderful woman of business, Molly. How do you do? Oh, thanks so much. Well, how do you do? My name is Wren. How do you do, Mr. Wren? Pleasure. Terrible weather we're having, wouldn't you say? My driver gave up your gate. Wouldn't attempt it. No sporting instinct. Well, quite a lovely place you have. You're not at all as I pictured you. I thought you'd be some retired general's widow, Indian army, and I thought the place would be absolutely crammed with Ben Air's thrust. But instead, it's heavenly. Quite heavenly. That's fake. But this table is genuine. I'm simply going to love it here. Tell me, have you got any wax flowers or birds of paradise? Oh, I'm afraid not. I see. Then what about a sideboard? A purple, plummy, mahogany sideboard? Yes, we have. In the dining room. In here? I simply must see it. Ah, good quality bedrock respectability. But why do away with the center table? Little tables just spoil the effect. We thought the guests would prefer it. This is my husband. How do you do? Terrible weather we're having, don't you think? Brings one back to Dickens and Scrooge and that irritating tiny Tim. So bogus. And Molly, you're right about the center mahogany table. <laughs> if you had a center mahogany table, you'd have to have the right family around it. Stern, handsome father, faded mother, eleven children of assorted ages, a grim governess, and someone called poor Harriet, who acts as a general dog's body and is very, very grateful to be given a good home. Let me take your suitcase up for you. Which room did you say? Oak room? Yes. I do hope it's got a four poster with little chins roses. It doesn't. <laughs> I don't think your husband is going to like me very much. It shall be all right. 
Would you like to come up and see your room? Ticked off? But I do so love knowing all about people, don't you? I guess some people are interesting and some are not. No, 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 I don't agree. They're all interesting. For it, exact, exactly like this. You never know what someone is thinking or what they are really like. For instance, you don't know what I'm thinking now, do you? Not in the least. Cigarette? No, thank you. But that's exactly the point. The only per people who really know what someone is thinking are artists, and they don't know why they know it. But if you're a portrait painter, it simply comes out on the canvas. Are you a painter? No, I'm an architect. <laughs> <laughs> My parents baptized me, Christopher, in hopes that I'd be an architect. Everyone at school always laughed and teased and made jokes about St. Paul's. But who knows? Chris Wren's prefabness may yet go down in history! You know, I think I'm going to like it here. I find your wife most sympathetic. Indeed. And really. Very beautiful. Oh, don't be absurd. See? Just like an Englishwoman. European women take compliments as a matter of course, but European women have all the feminine spirit crushed out of them by their husbands. There's something very boorish about English husbands. Do come and see your room. Shall I? Giles, can you suck up the hot water boiler? This is Munchwell Manor Nest House, I assume. Yes. I'm Miss Boyle. I'm Giles Ralston. Come to the fire, Miss Boyle. Get warm. Awful weather, isn't it? Is this your only luggage? A major Metcalf, is it? Is seeing to it. I'll go leave the door for him. The taxi wouldn't risk coming up the drive. We had to stop at the gate. And there was, we had to share a taxi all the way from the station, and there was a great difficulty in that. Nothing ordered to meet us, it seems. I'm sorry, we didn't know what train you'd be arriving on. You see, otherwise we would have seen that someone was, uh, standing by. All trains should have been met. Well, let me take your coat. My wife will be down in a moment. I'll just go give Major a hand with the bags. The drive might have at least been cleared of snow. Most off-handed and casual, I must say. I'm so sorry, Miss, Miss Ralston? Yes, hi. You're very young. Young? To be running an establishment of this time. Oh, you can't have much experience. Well, everyone must start off with some, somewhere. Indeed, quite inexperienced. It's an old house. I will be able to got dry rot. Certainly not. A lot of people don't know they have dry rot until it's too late. The house is in perfect condition. It could do with a coat of paint. You know you have worm in this oak. This way, Major. This is my wife. How do you do? Oh, terrible blizzard outside. I thought at one point I wouldn't make it. Oh, I beg your pardon. I say if we're going home by this, we'll have about five or six feet of snow by morning. I haven't seen anything like it since I won't leave in 1940. We'll just go take these up. Major! Sir! Do you have much servant difficulty here? Oh, we have a very good local woman who comes in every week. And what about with your staff? No one your staff, just us. You see, I understood that this was a guest house in full working order. We've only just started. I would have said that a proper staff of servants was essential before opening this kind of establishment. I find your advertisement most misleading. Am I the only guest staying here? Besides Major Metcalf, that is. Oh no, there's several others. And this weather, weather too, a blizzard, no less. How very unfortunate. We couldn't very well foresee the weather. The north wind doth blow, and it will bring snow. And what will the robin do then, poor thing? May I introduce? Mr. Rent, Mrs. Boyle. How do you do? This is a very lovely house, don't you think? I have come to the time of my life where the amenities of our house are more important than its appearance. If I had known this was a running concern, I should have never stayed here. 
There is no obligation for you to remain here if you're not satisfied, Miss Boyle. No, I shan't think of doing so. If there's been any misapprehension, it would perhaps be better if you went elsewhere. I could still ring up a taxi to return. The roads are not yet blocked. There have been so many applications for rooms, we'll be able to fill your place quite easily. I most certainly will not until I've tried this place out. You needn't think you can turn me out now. Miss Roxton, mind showing me to my room? Certainly, Mrs. Boyle. Darling, you are wonderful. Well, I think that's a perfectly horrid woman. I'd love to see you turn her out into the snow. It's a pleasure I have to forego, I'm afraid. Good lord, there's another one of them. <laughs> come in, come in. Afraid my car is gone about half a mile down the road. Ren is your friend. Mr. Ren, Mrs. Kate Swell. Is. Is my wife will be down in a minute. I'll just go and take that up. No hurry. Gotta get myself thawed out. Looks as though you're gonna be snowed up here. Hmm, weather forecast says heavy falls to be expected, motors worn, etc. Hope you got plenty of provisions then. Oh yes, my wife is an excellent manager. And we can always eat our hands if it comes down to it. Before we start eating each other, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Any news in there apart from the weather, that is? Usual political crisis. And oh yes, a rather juicy. Murder. murder? Oh, I like murder! They seem to think of some homicidal maniac. Strangled a woman somewhere near Paddington. Sex maniac, I suppose. Who was the woman who was murdered? Lion, Mrs. Maureen Lyon. Young or old? It doesn't say. Doesn't say much at all. But they're looking for a man wearing a soft belt hat, a light scarf, and a dark overcoat. Useful description. <laughs> Fit pretty well anyone, wouldn't it? It doesn't appear to be a robbery. I told you, sex maniac. <laughs> this is my wife. How do you do? It's an awful night. If you'd like to come to see your room, the water's hot if you'd like a bath. You're right, I would. <laughs> I must free up the kitchen and go to all the things. Maybe my customer's rather nice. He won't be a problem. It's Miss. Boy, I'm worried about. She, I must have a nice dinner. I was thinking of having two tins of minced beef, then cereal and a tin of peas, then mashing the potatoes. Do you think that would be all right? Oh, I should think so. Not, not very original, perhaps. Oh, do let me help. I adore cooking. Have you got any eggs? Oh yes, we've got plenty of eggs. We've got lots of fowls. None of them lay as well as they should, but we put down plenty of eggs. <coughs> Perhaps we can make an omelet, and if you have a bottle of cheap, any type of wine, it could give your minced beef and cereals quite the continental flavor. Show me the kitchen. I dare say I shall have inspiration. Come on. Cut this. He says leave it all to him and not to come back for half an hour. If I request him to do up cooking, she'll save us a lot of trouble. Why on earth did you give him the best room? I told you he liked the four poster. He liked the goody four poster. Twerp. Giles! I've got no use for his kind, and you didn't handle a suitcase. I did. Had it got bricks in it? It was no weight at all. If you ask me, there was nothing inside. He's probably one of those young men who go around bilking hotel cubes. I don't believe it. I quite like him. This case roll is rather odd, don't you think? Terrible female, if she is one. And Major Metcalf, he seemed rather nice. Probably drinks. Oh, you don't think so? <coughs> no, I don't. I was just feeling rather depressed. Well, and anyway, you know the worst of them now. They've all arrived. Who could that be? The Clover Street murderer. <laughs> don't. Oh. A thousand pardons, I am. Oh, dear. Where am I? Monkswell Manor guest home. Oh, but what stupendous good fortune! Madame! What an answer to prayer, a guest house, and a charming hostess. My Rolls Royce, alas, had run into a snowdrift, blinding snow everywhere. I do not know where I am. 
Perhaps I think to myself, I shall freeze to death. So I take a little bag, and I stagger through the snow a bit, and before me I see two big iron gates, a habitation, I am saved. Twice I fall into the snow as I come up your drive, but at last I arrive, and immediately <coughs> despair turns to joy. Can you let me have a look at it? Oh, yes, but it's quite small. Yeah, it's a rather small one, I'm afraid. Naturally, naturally, you have other guests. Oh, yes, there's Miss Casewell and Mrs. Boyle and Major Metcalf, and there's also a young man called Christopher Wren. And now me. Oh, yes. The unexpected guest, the guest you did not invite, the guest who just arrived out of nowhere, right out of the storm. It sounds quite dramatic, does it not? Who am I? You do not know. Where did I come from? You also do not know. Me? I am left in history. Now I tell you this. From now on, there will be no more arrivals, no more departures either. By tomorrow, perhaps even already, we are cut off from civilization. Milkman, no baker, no butcher, no postman, oh, no daily papers. Nobody, nothing but ourselves. That is admirable, admirable. It could not suit me better. You should get thoroughly warm. Oh, you're right. My name, by the way, is Paravicini. Oh, ours is Ralston. Mr. and Mrs. Ralston. And this is much more better guest house, you said. Good. Perfect. <coughs> Monkswell Manor Guest House. <laughs> I find it most dishonest not to have been told that they were just starting this place. Well, everything's got to have a beginning, you know. Excellent breakfast this morning. Great coffee, scrambled eggs, homemade marmalade. All nicely served, too, little woman does it all herself. Amateurs, there should be a proper staff. Good, excellent lunch as well. Corn beef? But very well disguised corn beef. Red wine in it. I hear Mrs. Ralston is going to make us a pie. These radiators are not very hot. I shall speak about them. Comfortable beds as well. At least mine was. Hope yours were too. It was adequate. I don't quite see why the best room was given to that very particular young man. Well, they got here ahead of us. First come, first served. From the advertisement, I got quite a different impression. A comfortable drawing room and a much larger place in all, with bridges and other amenities. Regular old tad is the body. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, I quite see it. No, indeed. I shan't stay here long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't suppose you will. <laughs> Unstable, I shouldn't wonder. I think he escaped from a lunatic or something. I shouldn't at all be surprised. Giles? Yes? Can you shovel a snow wagon in the back door? Coming. I'll help you. What? Exercise. Must get exercise. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Extraordinary young woman. Doesn't she know anything about housework? Carrying the carpet sweeper through the front hall? Are there any back stairs? Oh, yes, nice back stairs. Very convenient if there was a fire. Then why not use them? Anyways, the housework should have been done this morning before lunch. I gather our hostess had to cook the lunch. All very haphazard and amateurish. There should be a proper staff. Not very easy to get nowadays, is it? No. The lower class have no idea of their responsibility. Poor days. old lower classes got the bit between their teeth, haven't they? I gather you're a socialist. No, I wouldn't say that. I'm not a red. Just pale pink. But I don't take much interest in politics. I live abroad. I suppose things are much easier abroad. I don't have to cook and clean as I gather most people have to do in this country. This country has sadly gone downhill, not what it used to be. I sold my house last year. Everything was just too difficult. No hotels and guest houses are easier. Well, they certainly do solve some of those problems. Are you over in England for long? Depends. I've got some business to see to, and less done, I shall go back. To France? 
No. Italy? No. Because they wanted him to be an architect. And he is 
or nearly one, so I guess it worked out all right. Hmm. Sounds fishy. I would make inquiries if I were you. What do you know of it? About as much as I know about you, Mrs. Mill, which is that you're staying here and you're paying me seven guineas nearly every week. That's all that concerns me. It doesn't matter to me whether I like my guests or whether I do not. You are young and inexperienced, and should take advice from someone more knowledgeable than you. And what about this form? What about him? You weren't expecting him, were you? To turn away a bona fide traveler is against the law, Mrs. Boyle. You should know that. What do you mean? Weren't you a magistrate sitting on the bench, Mrs. Boyle? All I'm saying is that this Parabasini, or whatever he calls himself, seems to me- Beware, dear lady! Speak of the devil and hear him this. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. I gave it up to him, like this. Nobody ever hears me if I do not want them to. I find that very, very interesting. <laughs> Indeed. Now, there once was a young lady. I should get back to my reading. I'll go see if it's much warmer in the drawing room. <laughs> oh, my charming hostess looks upset. What is it, dear lady? Everything's rather difficult because of the snow. Yes, snow makes things difficult, or rather, makes them easy. I don't know what you mean. There's quite a lot I don't think you know. I, for one, don't think you know much about running a guest house. I dare say we don't, but we mean to make a go of it. Bravo, bravo. And I'm not such a very bad cook. You are without a doubt an enchanting cook. Might I give you a word of advice, Mrs. Ralston? You and your husband mustn't be too trusting. Have you references with these guests of yours? Is that usual? I thought people just, just came. It is advisable to know about the people who sleep on your roof. Take me, for example. I show up out of nowhere, saying my car overturned in a snowdrift. What do you know of me? Nothing at all. I could be a thief. A robber? A madman? A fugitive from justice? Or even a murderer? Oh. <laughs> Perhaps you know just as little of your other guests as well. <laughs> Miss Boyle gone. The drawing room is far too cold. I shall read my book out here. Allow me to poke the fire for you. Mrs. Lawson, about I'm afraid the pipes the downstairs is close to the Oh, first the police and now the pipes. Police! Police, did you say? Yes, they rung up just now. They said they're sending a sergeant or inspector or something. But I don't think we'll ever get here because of the snow. Oh, does anyone cook? Oh, I don't believe I know. I hear the police are on their way. What? Oh, that's all right. No one will get here today. Why, the drafts must be five feet deep. And the roads are all blocked up. That's right, no one will get here today. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Ferrisini, may I sit this down? Are you Mr. Ralston? Uh, yes. <laughs> Detective Sergeant Trotter, Berkshire Police. Uh, can I take these skis off and show them somewhere, please? <laughs> yeah, go around that way. I'll meet you. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess that's what we pay our police forces for, to go around enjoying winter sports. Mrs. Ralston, why did you phone the police? But I did it. Who was that man? He came by the drawing room window. All over snow and looking terribly hard to Believe it or not, that is a policeman. A policeman skiing. <laughs> <laughs> really? I must say I admire the police. This is Detective Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. You can't be a sergeant. You're far too young. Uh, I'm not quite as young as I look, madam, but terribly hard to Go around. Come, let's go slow your skis. Mrs. Ralston, how do you feel, Bill? Why, of course, maybe my cousin. Well, he's quite attractive, wouldn't you say? No brains. You can see that with a glance. Hello? Hello! Mrs. Ralston is from the day. It was just working a few minutes ago. Cold has gone all the way of the snow. <laughs> 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 We're quite cut off now, wouldn't you say? Quite cut off. I don't see anything to laugh about. No, indeed. 
Oh, it is but a private joke of my own. Hiss! The sleuth is returning. Now we can get down to business. Uh, Mr. Ralston, Mrs. Ralston. Would you like to see us in private? If so, we can go into the library. That's not necessary. It will save time if everyone's present. If I may sit at this table. I beg your pardon. Thank you. Oh, do tell us already. What have we done? Done? Oh, it's nothing of that kind. No, it's more a matter of police protection, if you understand it. Police protection? It relates to the death of Mrs. Lyon. Mrs. Maureen Lyon of 24 Culver Street, London, West 2, who was murdered yesterday, the 15th instant. You may have heard or read about the case. Yes, I think I heard it on the wireless. The woman who was strangled? That's right, madam. Now, what I want to know is if you were acquainted with this Mrs. Lyon. Never heard of her. Oh, you may have known her under the name Lyon. She had a police record, and her fingerprints were on file, so we were able to identify her without difficulty. Her real name was Maureen Stanning. Her husband, John Stanning, was a farmer. They resided at Longridge Farm, not very far from here. Longridge Farm? Wasn't that where those children... Yes, sir. The Longridge Farm case. Three children? That's right, miss. The Corrigans, two boys and a girl, brought before the courts as a need of protection. The youngest boy subsequently died as a result of criminal neglect and persistent ill treatment. Case made a bitter <coughs> sensation at the time. It was horrible. The Stannings were sentenced to terms of imprisonment. Stanning died in jail. Mrs. Stanning served her sentence and was duly released. Yesterday, as I say, was found murdered at 24 Culver Street. So they think that it's this man who killed Mrs. Lyon, or Miss Stanning? Oh, I'm getting to that, madam. A notebook was found at the scene of the crime, and in that notebook was written two addresses. One was at 24 Culver Street, and the other was here at Monksville Manor. What? Yes, sir. So, on receiving this information from Scotland Yard, Superintendent Hogman found it imperative that I come down here and see if there was any connection with this house, or anyone in this house and the Long Ridge Farm case. <coughs> There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. It must be a coincidence. Superintendent Hogbin doesn't think of it as a coincidence, sir. He would have come down here if it had been in any way possible. But due to the weather and seeing as I can ski, he sent me down here with instructions to get full particulars on everyone in this house and report back to him by phone and take what measures I thought fit to ensure the safety of this household. Safety? What danger does he think we're in? Good lord, you're not suggesting someone's going to be killed here. I don't want to frighten any of the ladies, but quite frankly, yes, that is the idea. But why? I, I know it's crazy, sir, but yes, it's crazy, and that's what makes it dangerous. Nonsense! I must say it seems a bit far-fetched. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> there were three children, and the youngest one died, a boy of eleven. A home was found for the sister with someone. We haven't been able to trace her present whereabouts. Uh, the elder boy would now be about... 22, deserted from the army, according to the psychiatrist's report, was definitely a schizophrenic. A bit queer in the head, that's to say. They think it was he, he who killed Mrs. Lyons? Uh, yes. And that he's going to come here and try to kill all of us, but why? That's what I've got to find out from you. As Superintendent Hogman sees that there's got to be some connection between this house and the Long Ridge Farm case. So, as you state, sir, you had no connection with this Mrs. Lyon. No. And same goes for you, madam. I no, I no connection. What about servants? We haven't got any servants. That reminds me. I must go out to the kitchen. I'll be in there if you need me, Sergeant. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Ralston. Now, can I have your name, please? This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying at a type of hotel. We have nothing to do with this place. We only arrived yesterday. But you booked your rooms in advance. You planned to come here, didn't you? <coughs> Well, yes, all except for Mr. Paravicini. My car overturned in a snowdrift. So, what I'm getting at is that anybody who's been following you around might know that you were coming here. Now, there's just one thing I want to know, and I want to know it quick. Which one of you was it that had any connection with the Longridge Farm case? You're not being very sensible, you know. One of you is in danger, deadly danger, and I've got to know which one of you that is. All right, I'll start with you one by one. You first, since you seem to arrive here more or less by accident, Mr. Pari... Para, Paravicini. 
But my dear inspector, I know nothing but nothing of the local affairs of bygone years. I am a stranger in this country. Mrs. Boyle. I don't see you really. I find this an impertinence. What would I have anything to do with that distressing business? Oh, miss. Casewell, Leslie Casewell. I never heard of Longridge Farm and I know nothing about it. You, sir? Metcalf, Major. Uh, I read about in the papers at the time. I was stationed in Edinburgh. No personal knowledge. And you? Christopher Wren. I was but a boy at the time. I don't even remember hearing about it. And that's all you have to say. Any of you? Well, if one of you gets murdered, you'll have yourself to blame. Now, Mr. Ralston, may I please have a look around the house? Oh, yes. My dears, how melodramatic! He's quite attractive, wouldn't you say? I have always found the police so attractive, so stern and hard boiled. What was that to Three blind mice, I believe. Mr. Red! <laughs> what, Miss Boyle, you don't like it? But it's a signature tune, my dear. A signature tune. A murderer! Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. Oh, but my dear, don't you see? It's a joke. A madman's joke! And that's what makes it so deliciously macabre. But just wait until you feel my fingers are around your neck. Stop! That's enough, Christopher! That's a poor joke. In fact, it's not a joke at all. As I said, a madman's joke. The look on your faces. Proceedingly ill-mannered and rotten, young man. Wait, Giles. Taking our policeman on a conductor tour of the house. Miss Ralston, your friend, the architect, has been behaving most abnormal. <laughs> young fellas seem nervous, nervous nowadays. Their sales are getting to Nerves? I have no patience with people with nerves. I haven't any nerves. That's just as well for you, Miss Boyle. What do you mean? Weren't you one of the magistrates on the board at the time? The one responsible for sending those children to the Longbridge Farm in the first place? Really, Major Metcalf, I can hardly be held accountable. We have reports from welfare workers, and the farm people seem most anxious and happy to have the children. I thought it would be a, I thought it would be a happy life for them. Healthy outdoors life, fresh eggs, milk. Kicks, blows, and a thoroughly vicious couple. How was I supposed to know they were very civilly spoken? Yes, I was right. It was you. One tries to do a public duty and all they get is abuse. <laughs> you must excuse me, but I find all of this very amusing. I enjoy myself. Never did like that man. Where did he come from last night? Oh, I don't know. He looks a bit of a spiff to me. Makes himself up. Blushing powder. Disgusting. He must be quite old, too. Yet he walks around as though he's quite young. He'll be wanting more firewood. I'll get it. It's rather dark, and it's only four in the afternoon. I should turn the lights on. What a horrid little tune that is. Don't you like it? Mind you, your childhood. I was very happy as a child. Yeah. Lucky for you. Were you happy? No. I'm sorry. But all that was a long time ago. One gets over things. I suppose so. Or doesn't one? Damned hard to say. They say that what happens when you're young matters more than anything else. They say. They say. Who says? Psychologists. All oh, humbug. Just a damned lot of nonsense. I've got no use for psychologists and psychiatrists. I've never had much to do with them. A good thing for you, you haven't. It's all hooey, the whole thing. Life's what you make of it. Go straight ahead, don't look back. Oh, but one can always help but look back. Nonsense, it's all a question of willpower. Perhaps. I know. I suppose you do, but, oh, sometimes things happen to make you remember. Don't give in, turn your back on them. Is that really the right way? Sometimes I wonder. 
Perhaps one ought to face them. It depends on what you're talking about. Half the time I hardly know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Nothing from the past is going to affect me except in a way that I want it to. Everything is all right upstairs. What's in here? No. Draw again. Would you mind closing that door? This place is full of drafts. Sorry, miss, but I've got to get the lay of the land. Molly, what's all this? Well, that completes the tour. Nothing suspicious going on. I think I'll make my report to Superintendent Hogman now. Oh, but you can't. The telephone said. What? Since when? Maybe Beck had tried it just after you arrived. But it was working earlier. Superintendent Hogman got through all right. Oh, I suppose since then the lines are down with the snow. I wonder. It may have been cut. Cut? But who could have cut it? Mr. Ralston, how much do you know about these guests? that are staying at your guest home? We really don't know anything about them. I see. Uh, Miss Boyle wrote from an address in Kimington, and Major McCaff and an address were from, where was it? Leamington. Oh, yes. M Mr. Wren wrote from an address, wrote from the hotel at Burmouth, and Miss Casewell wrote from a private address from Kingston. Still, I, and Perry Bassini, as we told you, showed up out of the blue last night. Still, I suppose they've all got ration books from that sort. Uh, I shall go into all of that, of course, but there's not much reliance to be placed on that sort of evidence. We should be rather safe, even if we wanted to get it, because of the snow. We'd have to wait till it all melted. Unless he's already here. Here already? Nonsense. Why? Why not, Mr. Ralston? All of your guests arrived here some hours after the murder was committed last night. Plenty of time to get here. Yes, but except for Paravicini, they all booked in advance. Why not, Mr. Ralston? These crimes were planned. Crimes? There's only been one crime. In Clover Street. What makes you so sure there'll be another here? That it will happen here? No, I hope to prevent that. That it will be attempted? Yes. Have you got a description of this man in London? Yes. Um... Medium height, indeterminate build, dark overcoat, soft felt hat, Face hidden by a muffler, spoke in a whisper. There are three dark overcoats here right now. One of them is yours, Mr. Austin. There are three lightish felt hats. I still don't believe it. You know, it's the telephone wire that worries me. It's been cut. I must get on with the vegetables. Is there an extension? Pardon me, did you say something? Yes, Mr. Ralston, I said, is there an extension? Yes, up in our bedroom. Go up there and check it for me, will you? Thank you. and think. I can't think. My head's numb. Mrs. Boyle had only just been killed when you got to her. Or you said you came from the kitchen. Are you sure you didn't hear or see anything as you came along the hallway? No, I don't think so. I just remember hearing the radio blaring out in here and I couldn't think of who turned it on. I wouldn't hear anything else of that, would I? That was clearly the murderer's idea, or murderess. How could I hear anything else? You might have done... Listen, if the murderer came through the hall that way, he might have heard you coming from the kitchen, and he might have slipped up the back stairs or into the dining room. I think. I'm not sure, but I heard the door creak and then slowly shut, just as I was coming out of the kitchen. Which door? I don't know. Think, Mrs. Ralston, think. Upstairs, downstairs, close at hand, right, left? I don't know, I tell you. I'm not sure I even heard anything at all. 
Can you stop bullying her, Casey? She's all in. You're investigating a murder, Mr. Ralston. Up until now, nobody has taken this thing seriously. Mrs. Boyle didn't. She held out on me with information. Well, Mrs. Boyle is dead. And unless we get to the bottom of this, and quickly, mind you, there might be another death. Another? Why? Because, Mr. Ralston, there were three little blind mice. Three blind mice, a death for each of them. Don't have to mean there's a connection. I mean, another connection. To Long Ridge Farm business. Yes, there would have to be that. <coughs> but what makes you so sure there'll be another death here? Because in the notebook we found there was written two addresses. Now, at 24 Culver Street, there was only one possible victim. She's dead. Here at Monkswell Manor, there is a wider field. Nonsense. Surely it would be a most unlikely coincidence that there should be two people both with the Sharon and Long Ridge Farm case? Given certain circumstances, it wouldn't be so much of a coincidence. Think it out, Miss Casewell. Now, I want to get down to quite clearly where you all were at the time the murder was committed. We already have Mrs. Ralston's statements. You were in the kitchen preparing vegetables. You came out of the kitchen, down the hallway, through the swing door into the passage, and in here. The light was turned off, but the radio was blaring. The hall was dark. You switched the light on, saw Mrs. Boyle, and screamed. Yes. Screamed and screamed, and at last, people came. Yes. As you say, people came. All different people from all different places, all arriving here more or less at once. Now, when I got out of that window to trace the telephone wire, you, Mr. Ralston, went up to the room you and Mrs. Ralston occupied. Where were you when Mrs. Ralston screamed? I was still up in the bedroom. I checked the extension. It was dead, too. So I opened the window to see if I could see any signs of wires being cut. But I just couldn't, so I closed it. Then I heard Polly scream and rushed downstairs. Those simple actions took you a rather long time, didn't they, Mr. Ralston? I don't think so. Yes. I should say you definitely took your time on them. I was thinking about something. Very well. Mr. Wren, I'll have your statement. I'd been in the kitchen, looking to see if there was anything I could do to help Mrs. Ralston. After that, uh, I went up to my bedroom. Why? It's quite a natural thing to do, to go to one's room. One does want to be alone sometimes. So you went to your bedroom because you wanted to be alone? And I wanted to brush my hair. And, er, tidy up a bit. You wanted to brush your hair? Anyway, that's where I was. And you heard Mrs. Ralston scream? Yes. And you came down? Yes. Curious that you and Mr. Ralston didn't meet on the stairs. I went down by the back stairs. They're closer to my room. Did you go up to your room by the back stairs, or did you come in through here? I went up by the back stairs, too. Very well. Mr. Parabatini, you say you were playing the piano in the drawing room. Yes. Through there, Inspector. Could anybody hear you playing the piano? No, I do not accept so. I was playing very softly with one finger. You're playing through my mic. Is that so? Yes. It is a very catchy tune. Or, how shall I say, a haunting little tune? Don't you all agree? I think it's horrible. And yet it runs through people's heads. I could have sworn I heard someone whistling it. Whistling it? Where? I don't know. Perhaps in the front hall. Perhaps <coughs> in the dining room. Perhaps even in a bedroom upstairs. Who was whistling three blind mice? Are you making this up, Mr. Parabuccini? Oh, no, Inspector. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sergeant. I would not do a thing like that. Mr. Ralston upstairs. Mr. Wren upstairs. Mr. Parabuccini in the drawing room. Miss Casewell. I was writing letters in the library. And could you hear what was going on in here? No, I didn't hear anything until I heard Mrs. Ralston scream. And what did you do then? I came down here. At once? I think so. So you say you were writing letters in the library? Yes. And you heard Mrs. Ralston scream and hurriedly came in here? Yes. Yet there doesn't seem to be any unfinished letter on the writing desk in the library. No, I brought it with me. <laughs> Dearest Jessie, hmm, a friend of yours or a relation. That's none of your damned business. Perhaps not. You know, Miss Casewell, if I heard someone screaming blue murder while I was writing letters, I don't think I'd take the time to fold up my unfinished letter and put it in my pocket before coming to see what was the matter. You wouldn't? How interesting. 
Major Metcalf, what about you? You said you were in the cellars. Why? I was looking around. I was just looking around. I was under the uh, cupboard place, under the stairs. I, uh, I saw another door and I went down the stairs. Nice place you got. I'm glad you like my cellars. Not at all. Old monastery of a place. Probably why they call it monks. Well, we are not engaged in antiquarian research, Major Metcalf. We are investigating a murder. Now, Mrs. Ralston has told us that she heard a door shut with a faint creak. <coughs> that particular door shuts with a creak, and it could be you, you know, that after killing Mrs. Boyle, you heard Mrs. Ralston coming from the kitchen and slipped into the cupboard, pulling the door to after him. A lot of things could be. There would be fingerprints inside the cupboard. Mine are there, all right, but almost criminals can't want to wear gloves. It's usual, but every criminal slips up now and again. I wonder if that's really true, Sergeant. Well, look here, aren't we wasting time? There's only one person. Please, Mr. Ralston, I am in charge of this investigation. Very well, but... Mr. Ralston. Thank you. Now, we've got to establish opportunity, you know, as well as motive. And believe me when I say this, you all had opportunity. But I know you. There are two staircases. Anyone could go up by one and down by the other. Anyone could go through the cellars and go through a trap door and come up at the flight of steps that leads to the trap door at the foot of the stairs over there. The vital fact was that you were all alone at the time the murder was committed. You speak as though we're all under suspect, but that's absurd. In a murder case, everyone is under suspicion. Yes, but you know pretty well who killed that woman in Clover Street. You think it's the eldest of those three children, a mentally abnormal young man, 23 years of age. Well, damn it all! There's only one person here who fits the bill. It's not true! It's not true! You're against me! You're all against me! Everyone's always been against me! You're going to frame me for a murder I didn't commit! It's persecution, I tell you! Persecution! Steady! It's all right, Chris. Nobody's against you. Tell him it's all right. We do not frame people. Tell him that you're not going to arrest him. I'm not arresting anybody. To do that, I've got to have evidence. And I don't have evidence. Yet. I think you're crazy, Molly. And you too. There's a murderer on the loose, and it seems to me he fits the bill. If only as a safety precaution, it's only fair for the rest of us if you put him under arrest. Wait, Charles, wait. Sergeant Trotter, may I speak to you for a minute? Yes, of course, Mrs. Ralston. Will you all please go into the dining room? I'm staying. No, Giles, you too, please. I'm staying. I don't know what's came over you, Molly. Please! Yes, Mrs. Ralston? What is it you wanted to say to me? Sergeant Trotter, you think that this crazy killer is the eldest of those three boys in the farm, but you don't know that, do you? We have no information. Um, all we do have is that the woman who joined in with her husband in the ill treatment and starvation of these children has been killed. The woman magistrate who was responsible for putting them there has been killed, and the telephone wire that links me to police headquarters has been cut. You don't even know that. It could have just been the snow. No, Mrs. Roxton, the line was deliberately cut. I found the place just outside the front door. I see. Sit down, Mrs. Roxton. But all the same, you don't know. I'm only going by probability. It all seems to point one way. You know, mental instability, childish mentality, desertion from the army, and the psychiatrist's report. I know, I know, and therefore it all seems to point to Ren, but I don't think it is Ren. There has to be some other possibility. Such as? Had the children any other relations at all? Their mother was a drunk. She died soon after the children were taken from her. Yes, and the father? He was an army sergeant, serving abroad. If he's alive by now, he's probably been discharged. So you don't know where he is right now? No, but, and tracking him may take some time, but trust me, Mrs. Ralston, the police take every eventuality into account. But you don't know where he is right now. And if the son is mentally unstable, then the father may as well be too. Well, yes, that's a possibility. If he had come home after being held captive by the Jacks, perhaps, and having suffered terribly, if he had come home to find his, what, his wife dead, and that his children had gone through some terrible experience, and one of them had died through it, he might have just gone off his head a little bit, and he might want revenge. Well, that's only surmise. But it's possible. Oh, yes, Mrs. Ralston, it's quite possible. So that could mean that the killer could be middle-aged or even old. When I said the police had run up, Major Metcalf seemed frightfully upset. I saw his face. Major Metcalf. 
middle-aged, a soldier. He's rather <laughs> nice and seems pretty normal, but it mightn't show, might it? No, often it doesn't show at all. So that would mean Christopher Wren isn't the only suspect. Major Metcalf is as well. <laughs> Any other suggestions? Hmm. Well, Mr. Paravicini did drop the firecracker when I said the police had rung up. Mr. Paravicini? I know, I know. He's quite old and all, and he's foreign, but he might not be as old as he looks. He walks around as though he's quite young, and he wears a lot of makeup on his face. This case also saw it, too. Oh, I know it sounds dramatic, but what if he's disguised? You're very anxious, aren't you, that it might not be young Mr. Wren? He seems so hopeless somehow, and so unhappy. Listen, Mrs. Ralston. I've had every possibility in mind since the beginning. You know, the boy Georgie, the father, but there was someone else. There was a sister, you remember. Oh, the sister? Yes, it might have been a woman who killed Marie Lyon. You know, the felt hat pulled down and the muffler pulled well up, and the killer spoke in a whisper. You know, it's the voice that gives the sex away. Yes, it might have been a woman. Miss Casewell. She seems a bit too old for the part. Yes, Mrs. Ralston, there is a wide field. There's yourself, for instance. Me? But I... You're about the right age. No, I... No, no. Whatever you're about to tell me, I have no means of checking at the moment. There's your husband as well. Child? Don't be ridiculous. Him and Mr. Wren are much of an age. You see, Mr. Wren looks young for his years, while your husband looks older. Exact age is very hard to tell. How much do you know about your husband, Mrs. Ralston? How much do I know about Giles? Don't be silly. You've been married how long? Just a year. And you met him where? <coughs> At a dance in London. We went to a party. Did you meet his people? He hasn't any people. They're all dead. They're all dead? Oh, you make it sound all wrong, but his father was a barrister and his mother died when he was quite young. You're only telling me what he told you. Yes, I know, but... But you don't know it of your own knowledge. It's improbable to You'd suggest... be surprised, Mrs. Ralston, if you knew how many cases rather like yours we get. Especially since the war. Homes broken up, families dead. Fellow said he's been in the Air Force or just finished Army training. You know, it's young fellows that make... They settle their own affairs nowadays. They meet and marry. It was parents and relatives that made the inquiries before consenting to an engagement. That's all done away with. Girl just marries her man. It could be a year or two before he, she finds out that he's an absconding bank clerk or an army deserter or something equally as undesirable. How much do you know about your husband, Mrs. Ralston? Oh, <coughs> I know him so well. I've known him for I know him for three weeks before I met him. Three weeks, and you don't actually know anything about him. Oh, that's not true. I know everything about him. He's my husband. He's Giles. And to suggest that he's some crazy homicidal maniac is absurd. Why he wasn't even in London when the murder took place? Where was he? Here. He went across the countryside to get some chicken egg. Did he bring it back with him? Oh, it wasn't the right kind. Only 30 miles from London, are you? Do you have any BC? Just an hour by train, a little longer by car. I'm telling you, Giles wasn't in London. Just a minute, Mrs. Ralston. Is this your husband's coat? Yes. <coughs> Evening news. Yesterday's. Sold on the streets about 3.30 yesterday afternoon. What? I don't believe it. Don't you? Don't you? <coughs> Molly! Oh, you startled me. Is he here? Who? The sergeant! Oh, he went off that way. Uh, if only there was somewhere I could go away. Somehow, some way. Is there anywhere in the house that I can hide? Can hide? Yes, from him! Who? Why? The sergeant and darling, they're all so frightfully against me. They're going to say I committed these murders. Particularly your husband. Never mind him. Chris, you need to stop running away from things all your life. What makes you say that? Well, it's true, isn't it? Oh yes, it's true. Chris, you need to grow up. I wish I hadn't. Christopher Wren isn't your real name, is it? No. And you're not really training to be an architect? No. Why would you? Call myself Christopher Wren. It amused me. 
All the kids at school used to call me Little Christopher Robin. Robin, Wren, Association of Ideas. What's your real name? We needn't go into that. I ran away whilst doing my army services. It was all so beastly. I hated it. Yes, I'm just like an unknown murderer. I told you I was the one the description most fit. You see, my mother... My mother... Yes, your mother? Everything would be better if she hadn't died. She would have stayed with me, taken care of me. You can't have someone take care of you your whole life. Things happen to you and you've got to learn to bear with them. You need to learn to go on just as usual. One can't do that. Yes, one can. You mean you have? Yes. <clears throat> what was it? It must have been something very bad. Something I've never forgotten. Was it to do with Giles? <sighs> Giles. And it was long before I met him. So you are running away too? Yes, perhaps in a way I am. It's rather strange, considering we just met each other yesterday. We know each other rather well. Yes, it's quite odd, don't you think? It's almost like there's a sort of sympathy between us. You think I ought to stick it out? Well, frankly, what else can you do? I could pinch the sergeant's skis. I can ski quite well. That would be frightfully stupid. That would be like admitting you're guilty. The sergeant thinks I'm guilty. No, he doesn't. Or at least, oh, I don't know what he thinks. I hate him! I hate him! I hate him! Hate who? The sergeant! He puts things in your head! Things that can't be true! I won't believe it! What's all this? Oh, I can't believe it! I won't believe it! Believe what? You see that? Well, it's yesterday's paper. It's an evening paper from London. It was in Giles' pocket. But Giles didn't say he went to London yesterday. Well, if he was here all day... But he wasn't! He went across the countryside and some chicken netting, but he said it wasn't the right kind. Well, he probably did end up going to London then. <clears throat> then why shouldn't he say he did? Why say that he went around the countryside? Well, perhaps with this no the news of this murder... But he didn't know about the murder. Or did he? Did he? Sh surely you don't think... Oh, I don't know what the... Uh, I don't know what the sergeant thinks. I don't know what I think. <sighs> he puts things in your head. Things want to be true. You ask yourself questions and you begin to doubt. You feel as though someone you love and know more than anyone could be a stranger. That's what happens in a nightmare. You're surrounded by your friends and you look up at their faces and suddenly they're not your friends any longer. They're just strangers pretending. Perhaps you can't trust anybody. Perhaps everybody is a stranger. I seem to be interrupting something. Oh no, we were just talking. I must go to the kitchen. There's the pie and the potatoes and I must do the spinach. I'll give you a hand. No, you won't. Giles! But really, but really, look here. You keep away from my wife, friend. She's not going to be your next victim. So that's what you think about me. I already said it, haven't I? There's a murder on the loose. It seems to me you fit the bill. I'm not the only one here who fits the bill. I don't see who else does. How blind you are. Or do you merely pretend to be blind? I'm worried about my wife's safety, that's all. So am I. I'm not going to leave you alone with her. What the hell? Please, Christopher, just leave. I'm not going. Please. I shan't be far away. <clears throat> Molly, what is all this? You're perfectly the prepared to shut yourself up in the kitchen with the homicidal maniac? He isn't. You've only got to look at him to see he's grimy. He isn't. He's just unhappy. And, uh, Giles, I tell you, he's not dangerous. I wouldn't know if he was dangerous. And anyway, I can take care of myself. That's what Miss Boyle said. Giles, don't! What is it? Perhaps you met him before. Perhaps you suggested for him to come here. All cooked up between you two, was it? Giles, how dare you suggest these things? Rather odd, isn't it, you should come and stay in an out-of-the-way out place like this? No odder than that Miss Boyle or Miss Casewell or Major Metcalf should. I read in a paper once these... These homicidal cases tend to attract women. Looks the, though they be looks though they were right. How long have you known of him? How long has this been going on? You're being absolutely ridiculous. I hadn't seen him until yesterday when he arrived. That's what you say. Maybe you've been running up to London on the sly. You know perfectly well I haven't been up to London for weeks. You haven't been up to London for weeks. Is that so? It's quite right. Then what's this? Oh. It's one of the gloves you were wearing yesterday. You see what's inside? A London bus ticket. That 
So not only did you go to the village yesterday, you went to London as well. I... Whilst I was safely racing around the countryside. While well, you were safely racing around the countryside. Yes. All right, I'll admit it. I went to London, but so did you. What? And you brought back an evening paper. <laughs> Anyone could have put that there. <laughs> did they? No. It was you. You went to London. All right, I went to London, but I didn't go there to meet some woman. Are you sure you didn't? <clears throat> did you? What do you mean? Don't come near me. Molly, what's the matter? Titus, don't touch me! What's... I feel as if I don't know you anymore. Perhaps you never did know me. We've been married for, what, a year? You don't know what I suffered or felt... What I felt or... What I went through before you knew me. Molly, you're crazy. All right, perhaps I'm crazy. Why not? Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. What the hell are you? Oh, no. I do hope you young people aren't saying a bit more than me. What is so apt about this lover's quarrel? Lover's quarrel. That's good. Quite so, quite so. I know just how you feel. I've been through all this in my younger days. Je ne sais, je ne sais, as the poet says. Have I been married long ago? That's none of your business. No, no, no business at all. I just came in to say that Sergeant Trotter has lost his skis and he is quite annoyed. What? Christopher. What'd you just say? He wants to know if you need them for chance, Mr. Ralston. No. Mr. Ralston? Mrs. Ralston, have you removed my skis from the cupboard back there where we put them? No, we haven't. Somebody's taken them. What made you look for them? The, the snow is still on it. I need help here. Reinforcements. I was going to ski up to the police station in Market Hampton to report on the situation. Oh dear. And now it seems that someone has seen to it that you shan't do that. But there could be other reasons, couldn't there? Yes, what? Somebody may have wanted to get away. What did you mean when you said Christopher earlier? Nothing. <clears throat> Christopher. Oh, thank goodness you haven't left after all. Mr. Wren, have you taken my skis? Your skis, <coughs> Sergeant? No. Should I have? Well, Mrs. Ralston seemed to think. I just, he told me that he quite enjoyed skiing. I thought he took him out for exercise or something. Exercise? Listen, you people, somebody has ruined my only form of communication with the outside world. I want everybody in here at once. I think this case will has gone upstairs. I'll go get her. I left Major Metcalf in the dining room. Major Metcalf? He's not there now. I'll try and find him. Hello. What do you mean? It's a question of my skis. Mr. Ralston! Did either of you two remove a pair of skis from the cupboard near the kitchen door? Good lord, no. Why should I? I didn't touch them. Nevertheless, they are gone. Which way did you go to your bedroom? By the back stairs. Then you passed the cupboard door. If you say so, I have no idea where your skis are. Now, you were actually in that cupboard today. Yes, I was. At the time Mrs. Boyle was killed. At the time Mrs. Boyle was killed, I was already down in the cellar. So you passed the cupboard door with my skis in them. I haven't the slightest idea. Do you remember if the skis were there? Can't say I do. You must remember if the skis were there! No you shouting at me, young fellow. I wasn't looking for any damn skis! I was interested in the architecture. Rather interesting places. You know. I went down to the door. I told you this. So I can't tell you if the bloody skis were there or not. Major Metcalf, you know that you had a great opportunity of taking them. Yes, yes, I grant you that. If I wanted to. Well, the question is, where are they now? I can't suppose it's hard to find them. Whacking great thing skis off, not like you're hunting a thimble. Not so fast, Major Metcalf. You know, looking for the skis might be what we are meant to do. Huh? I'll get you. I'm in the position now where I've got to put myself in the mind of a crazy, cunning brain. I've got to think what he wants us to do next and think about what he himself is planning on doing next. I've got to stay at least one step ahead of him, because if I don't, one of you will die. You still don't think that, do you? Yes, Miss Kissel, I do. Three blind mice. Two mice cancelled out. One mice is still to be dealt with. Six of you are listening to me right now. One of you is a killer. Yes, 
One of you's a killer. I don't know which one yet, but I shall, and one of you is the killer's next prospective victim. That's who I'm speaking to right now. Mrs. Boyle held on, on me with information. Mrs. Boyle is dead. You, whoever you are, is holding out on me. Well, don't, because you are in danger. Nobody who's killed twice is going to hesitate to kill a third time. And as it is, I don't know which one of you it is that needs protection. Well, come out with it. Any of you who has any information, however slight, to reproach themselves for that in this bygone business better come out with it. All right. You won't. Well, I'll get the killer. I've no doubt of that. But it might be too late for one of you. And I'll tell you another thing. The killer's enjoying himself. Yes, he's enjoying himself a good deal. All right, you can go. I'm helping my wife. No, oh, dear. It seems your husband is afraid for you. Quite natural considering the circumstances. I'm sure Giles doesn't think. It is my sadistic tendencies he fears rather than my dishonorable ones. Alas, what an inconvenience the husband always is. Mm -hmm. Hey, little daughter. I'm sure he doesn't think. He is very wise. Take no chances. How can I prove to you, or to him, or to our dogged sergeant, that I'm not a homicidal maniac? So difficult to prove a negative. And to suppose that I'm really... Mm -hmm. Oh, don't. But such a gay little tune, don't you think? She cut off their tails with carving knives. Snick, snick, snick. Delicious. Just what a child would adore. Such cruel things children are. Some of them never grow up! Stop frightening my wife at once! It's silly of me, but you see, I found her. Her face was all purple. I can't stop seeing it. Yeah, I know. It's difficult to forget a thing like that. You really are forgetting her. I must go on to the kitchen. This is a pie of the potatoes. Oh, Giles, please. What did you say to the lady to upset her, sir? Me, Sergeant? Just a little innocent fun. I've always been fond of the picture. There's fun that's nice, and then there's fun that's not so nice. Now, I do wonder what you mean by that, sir. I've been doing a little wondering about you, sir. Indeed. I've been wondering about that car of yours, and how it happened to overturn in a snowdrift. So, conveniently. Inconveniently, you mean, Sergeant. You know, that rather depends on the way you're looking at it. <clears throat> Just where were you bound for last night when you had this accident? I was on my way to a friend's house. In this neighborhood? Not so very far from here. And what is the name and address of this friend? No, really, Sergeant Trotter. Does any of this matter now? It has nothing to do with our current predicament, has it? We always like the fullest information. Now, what did you say the name of this friend was? I didn't. That's right. You didn't. And it seems like you're not going to. Now, that's very interesting. But there could be so many reasons, couldn't there? And a more a discretion <coughs> these jealous husbands. Rather old to be running around with the ladies at your time of life, aren't you? Perhaps I'm not quite as old as I look, Sergeant. You know, that's just what I've been thinking. What? That you're not as old as you try to look. You know, many people go around trying to look younger than they are. But when someone goes around trying to look older, it does make one ask oneself why. You ask so many questions of others, you begin to ask them of yourself. I might get an answer for myself. I don't get many from you. Well, well, try again. That is, you have any questions I'll ask. One or two. Where were you coming from last night? That is easy, from London. What address in London? I always stay at the Ritz Hotel. Very nice, I'm sure. And what is your permanent address? I dislike permanency. What is your business or profession? I stock the markets. 
stockbroker? Oh, you misunderstood me. Enjoying this game, aren't you? And sure of yourself, too. Well, I wouldn't be too sure. You're mixed up in a murder case, sir. Murder isn't just fun and games. Not even this murder. Dear me, Sergeant Trotter, you are very serious. I always thought the police had no sense of humor. Is the Inquisition over for the moment? For the moment, yes. Thank you so much. I will go to the Dorado room to see if anyone has put your skis in the grand piano. Just a moment, please. Are you talking to me? Yes, Miss Casewell, I would. Perhaps you'd come and sit down. Well, what do you want? You may have heard some of the questions I was asking Mr. Paravicini. I heard them. Well, I'd like to get a little information from you. Well, what do you want to know? Full name, please. Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell. Catherine. I spell it with a K. Quite so. Address? Via Mariposa. Pine Dior, Mallorca. That's in Italy. It's an island. A Spanish island? Yes. Um, what is your address in England? Care of Morgan's Bank, Leadenhall Street. Any other English addresses? No. And what, how long have you been in England, Miss Casewell? A week. And you've been staying since your arrival? At the Ledbury Hotel, Knightsbridge. Yes. And what brings you to Monksville Manor? Uh, I wanted some place uh, quiet in the country. And how long did you, or do you, intend to stay here? Until I have finished what I came here to do. And what was that? And what was that? A? What was it that you came here to do? I beg your pardon, I was thinking of something else. You didn't answer my question. I don't really see, you know, why I should. It's a matter that concerns me and me alone. It's strictly a um, private affair. All the same, Miss Case. Well, no, I don't think we'll argue about it. Very well. Do you have, mind me asking your age? No, I don't mind at all. It's on my passport. I'm 24. 24. I know what you're thinking. I look much older. It's quite true. Is there anyone in this country who can vouch for you? Now, I have a banker that can assure you as to my financial position. I can also refer to you to a solicitor, a very discreet man. I don't have any social references. I'm in no position. I've lived most of my life abroad. In Majorca? In Majorca and other places. Were you born abroad? No, I moved to England when I was 13. You said that you moved to England when you were 13. 12, 13, thereabout. Was your name Casewell then? It's my name now. What was your name then? Come on, tell me. What are you trying to? I just want to know what your real name was when you came to England. I don't remember. There are things one doesn't forget. Possibly. Unhappiness, despair. I dare say. What is your real name? I told you. Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell. Catherine? What the hell are you doing here? I... Oh God, I wish to God I'd never come here. I thought the police weren't allowed to give people the third degree. I've been merely interrogating Miss Casewell. <coughs> you seem to have upset her. What did he do? I... It's nothing. It's just, um... It's murder. It's so horrible. It, um, came over me all of a sudden. I'll go up to my room. It's impossible. I can't believe it. Can't believe what? Six impossible <coughs> things before breakfast, like the Red Queen. Oh, yes, it's rather like that. <coughs> Dear me, you look as though you've seen a ghost. I've seen something I ought to have seen before. How blind as about I've been, but I think we might be able to get somewhere. The police have a clue. Yes, Mr. Wren, at last, the police have a clue. I want everyone assembled here at once. Molly and Giles are in the kitchen. Matt, Major Metcalf and I were just looking for your skis. I don't know where Paravicini is. I'll get him. You get the others. Mr. Paravicini! Yes, the little policeman has lost his skis and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home dragging a murder behind them. <laughs> What's all this about? Sit down, Major. Mrs. Roston. Once I come now, it's rather inconvenient. There are more important things than meals, Mrs. Ralston. For instance, Mrs. Boyle won't be having another meal. 
But that's the tactic way to put it, don't you find? I'm sorry, but I want cooperation and I intend to get it. Mr. Ralston, may you please go upstairs and get Miss Case while she's in her bedroom? And tell her it will only be a moment. Have you found your key, Sergeant? No, Mrs. Ralston, I have not. But I have a shrewd suspicion of who took them and why. I won't say any more at the present moment. Please don't. I always think the explanation should be saved for the very end. The exciting last chapter. This isn't a game, sir. That's where I think you're wrong. I think this is a game to someone. You think the murderer is enjoying himself. Maybe, maybe. What is happening? Uh, sit down, Mrs. Casewell. Will you all pay attention, please? You may remember I took your statements earlier. These statements related to the position you were in at the time the murder was committed. These statements were as follows. Uh, Mrs. Ralston in the kitchen, Mr. Paravicini playing the piano in the drawing room, Mr. Ralston in his bedroom, Mr. Ren Ditto, Miss Casewell in the library writing letters, Major Metcalf in the cellar. Correct. Those were the statements you told me. I am no means of checking on these statements. They may be true, they may be not. To put it quite clearly, five of them are true, one of them is false. Five of you were telling the truth to me, one of you is lying. <clears throat> and I think I've come up with a plan that would, might help me discover the liar. And if I discover the liar, it might help me to find out who the murderer is. Not necessarily. Someone could have lied for some other reason. I'd rather doubt that. I thought you just said you had no means of checking these statements. Um, no, but supposing everyone was to do these things a second time. Oh, that old chestnut. Reconstruction of the crime. That's a foreign idea. Not reconstruction of the crime, per se. More like reconstruction of actions of apparently innocent persons. Now, what do you expect to learn from all of it? You will forgive me if I don't reveal that at the present moment. I don't see the point. There is a point, Mr. Ralston. I want a repeat performance. It's a trap. What do you mean, it's a trap? It is a trap. I know it. I just want people to do exactly as they did before. I can't, I simply don't understand why you would wish for people to do as they have done before. I think it's nonsense. Do you, Mr. Wren? Well, I don't want any part of it. I'm too busy in the kitchen. I can't count you out. In fact, I can't count anybody out. You'd think that you were all the murderer just by the looks of your faces. Why are you all so unwilling? No, we'll, we'll cooperate. Molly? Very well. Ren? Casewell? Yes. McCaff? Yes. Parabasini? Oh yes, I consent. We're all to do exactly what we did before. The same actions will be performed, yes. Then I will go to the drawing room and look out the signature chain of a murder in front of me. Oh, mm -hmm. Not so fast, Mr. Parabicini. Mrs. Ralston, do you play the piano? Yes. Then you could go into the drawing room and pluck out Mount the three blind mice with one finger, just as Mr. Perbaccini did. Yes, I could. Then please go into the drawing room, and don't start playing until I give you my signal. The sergeant, I understood we were to repeat our former roles. The same actions will be performed, yes, but not necessarily by the same people. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Ralston. <coughs> and you might not think that there is a point to this, but there is a point. It's a means of checking up on the original statement and maybe one statement in particular. Now, I will assign each of you your new roles. I have written that. Will you pay attention, please? Mr. Wren, will you please go into the kitchen and check up on Mrs. Ralston's vegetables? I assume you're very fond of cooking. Mr. Perbaccini, I'd like you to go up to Mr. Wren's room. By the back stairs is the most convenient one. Major Metcalf, will you go up to Mr. and Mrs. Ralston's room to try the extension telephone? And, Miss Casewell, would you mind going down to the cellars? Mr. Wren will show you the way. Unfortunately, I need someone to reproduce my own actions. So, Mr. Ralston, would you please go outside and check the telephone wire by the front door? And what will you be doing? I will be enacting the part of Miss Boyle. Turn yourself at the risk, aren't you? Stay in your positions until I give you a signal. 
No objection for me wearing a coat. I should advise it, sir. And take my torch. It's just outside the curtain. Count to 20 and then begin to play. And according to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Culver Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Miss Marine Lyon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview her. See in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, a light scarf, and a soft coat hat. Motor is so warned against ice on roads. The heavy snow is expected to continue, and a certain freezing will occur in the points north and northeast of the coast of Scotland. Mrs. Ralston! Mrs. Ralston! Yes, what is it? You're looking rather pleased with yourself. Have you got what you wanted? Yes, I've got exactly what I wanted. You know who the murderer is? Yes, I know. Which of them? You ought to know, Mrs. Ralston. I? Yes, you have been extremely foolish. You've run the risk of being killed just by holding out on me. And as a result, you've been in danger more than once. I don't know what you mean. Please come now, Mrs. Ralston. We policemen aren't quite as dumb as you think. I've known all along that you've had first-hand knowledge of the Long Ridge Farm case. You knew Mrs. Boyle was the magistrate concerned. In fact, you knew all about it. Why didn't you say anything? I don't understand. I just wanted to forget. Don't forget. Your maiden name was Warren. Yes. Miss Warren. Yes. You taught in school. The school where those children went. It's true, isn't it, that Jimmy, the boy who died, managed to get a letter to you. The letter that begged for help. Help from his kind young teacher. You never answered that letter. I couldn't. I never got it. You just didn't bother. That's not true. I was very ill. I went down with pneumonia that very day. By the time I got the letter, it was too late. He was already dead. Dead. Oh, it hurts to think about. It was all my fault. If only I wasn't ill. If only I could have helped him somehow. Oh, it's just so monstrous that such things should happen. Yes, Mrs. Ralston, it's monstrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know policemen could carry revolvers. <laughs> the police don't. I'm not a policeman. You thought I was a policeman because I rang up from a call box saying it was police headquarters and that Sergeant Trotter was on his way. I cut the telephone wire just before I came to the front door. You know who I am, Mrs. Ralston. I'm Georgie. I'm Jimmy's brother, Georgie. You'd better not scream, Mrs. Ralston, because if you do, I shall fire this revolver. I'd like to talk to you a little. I said I'd like to talk to you a little. Jimmy died. That nasty, cruel woman killed him. I said I'd kill her one day, and I did too, in the fog. It was great fun. I hope Jimmy knows. I'll kill them all one day when I've grown up because grown ups get to do whatever they want. I'm going to kill you in a minute. You better not, you'll never get safely away. Oh, somebody's taken my skis and I can't find them. <laughs> but I don't care. It doesn't matter to me if I get away or not. I'm tired. It's all been great fun watching you and pretending to be a policeman. Revolver will make a lot of noise. Oh. <laughs> it will, rather. Better to do it the usual way. By taking you by the neck. The last little mouse in the trap. Three, one. Georgie, you remember me, don't you? You remember the farm? Don't you? Don't you Georgie? The animals and the pig and the day the bull chases across the yard. And the dogs? Dogs? Yes. Spot and plane? Captain? Yes. You remember me now, don't you? Captain, what are you doing here? I'm here to take you to England and see that you won't do any more harm. Come with me. You're coming with me. <laughs> Ralston! Ralston! Molly, Molly, you're all right. Whomever would have thought it was Trotter. I was mixed up all in it, I'm afraid. I was a teacher. 
Please, that was my fault, but it wasn't. You should have told me. I didn't want to. I wanted to forget. Yeah, he'll be out of the sedan and set it soon. The sister got to him. The fellow's mad as a hatter. I've had my suspicions all along. You did? You didn't think he was a policeman? I knew he was a policeman. You see, Mrs. Ralston, I'm a policeman. You? When we got the notebook that said Monkville Manor, we knew that we had to have somebody inside the place. When I went to Major Metcalf to ask him if he could give up his part, uh, he happily gave it to me. I had no idea when Trotter got here. And Miss Casewell, that's his sister? She figured out it was him right before this business. It's crazy. Well, the snow should be beginning to thaw, so it helps be on its way. Thought... And you'll find the skis on top of the fort poster. I have been... And I thought it was a pair of all along. Oh, I think they examined that car just quite carefully. I wouldn't be surprised if they found a thousand or so switch washes hit in a spare tile. Nasty bit of good those <laughs> things are. Molly, I believe you thought I was... Giles, what were you doing in London? I was buying your anniversary present. We've been married just a year today. Oh, that's so weird. That's why I was in London. And I didn't want you to know. No? You see, I got you a present. It's a box of cigars. I hope you like them. They're splendid. You'll smoke them? I'll smoke them. And what's my present? Oh, I nearly forgot. It's a hat. Oh, you got me a hat? Just for the best. Oh, but I never wear them. Put it on. Oh, I shall do it later when my hair is looking better. Oh, I hope you like it. The woman at the store said it was just the right thing for hats. It's lovely, darling. This is all the terrible smell of burning coming from the kitchen. <laughs> 